Good morning. It's Friday. It's going to be a beautiful day outside. Um, I'm running a little slow this morning, so <clears throat> how are you doing? Today we're going to look at this passage in 1 John that moves on from yesterday. And again, it kind of answers the question for us, how do you know that you actually know God? And it's kind of, um, um, it makes you struggle. Yesterday when we read the passage, let me scroll back up to that. He says this, no one born of God makes a practice of sinning. It kind of slapped us in the face yesterday because he created this either or situation. If you practice righteousness, you're of God. If you practice sinning, you're of the devil. No in between. Well, he ended yesterday's passage with, with this. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. And nor is the one who does not love his brother. So now he brings an entire new subject in. He's been talking about practicing righteousness or practicing sin for a couple of paragraphs. Now it's about loving your brother. So how do you know you really know God? Do you love your brother? I'm going to read you verses 11 to 15. For this is the message you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We should not be like Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. So you see he's bringing these two things in. Are you practicing evil? Are you practicing righteousness? Do not be surprised, brothers, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. And whoever does not love, whoever does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, just like Cain is the point. That's why he brought up Cain. Everyone who, who does not love his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. He takes, takes big leaps here. If you don't love your brother, you're a murderer. And you know that murderers don't have eternal life. So, so John is answering a question. How do you know that you're in the kingdom of God? How do you know you belong to God? How do you know you are saved would be our terminology. John uses different terminology. And, and we like to go back to, oh, well, so many years ago, you know, for me, 41 years ago, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I know I'm saved because I remember that day. John doesn't go back. John looks at right now. How do you know that you're in the family of God? How do you know that you, that you even know God? How do you know you have eternal life? Because you're not practicing sin, but practicing righteousness, and you love your brother. <clears throat> so that this, this, we need to sit back, put our theology aside about what we believe about eternal security, what we believe about how I know I'm saved, and let John teach us about this. And it's to look and examine our life and say, what is the fruit in our life? Remember, we talked about abiding in Christ. And there's fruit, fruit of righteousness. Now the fruit of love. Let me read to you John's example of love now. Verse 16, by this we know love. That he, referring to Christ, he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. If anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or in talk, but in deed and in truth. So, the old cliche, I've said it before, love is an action. And we can claim to love one another all day long. But when I have what my brother needs, a physical, a physical thing, money, resources, food, whatever, he needs to borrow a car, you, you, you can flesh it out. I have something my brother truly needs. And I say, no, I'm not going to let you have that. No, I'm not going to let you borrow that. No, go get your own. This says the love of God does not abide in us. And if the love of God does not abide in us, then we don't know him. So what, what do we do with this? I, th I think, and, and this, was a, this was my struggle, and I'm hearing from some of you that, that the measure of kind of the condemnation it, it tends to put upon you. What we need to do is not, not submit to this condemnation. That's not what John is doing. That's not what the Bible is about. The Bible is about you living a life that God has saved you to live. And that life is this, a life of righteousness and a life of love. And they are both action words, and they both represent who Jesus was. If Christ is in us and we're in Christ, these things should be flowing from us. Let me reiterate, and this isn't an excuse. We're not talking about perfection, but we're talking about a trajectory. Do you see in your life an increase 
in walking in righteousness to where sin is becoming less and less an issue in your life, less and less your master? And do you see your concern for your brothers and sisters, your love for them growing in your life? So I'll end on this imagery, and you need to meditate on this passage, read it over and over, talk to God about it. But as a kid, one of my favorite songs was Stairway to Heaven. By, um, I was going to say ZZ Top, not ZZ Top, by Led Zeppelin. And just imagine this idea of a stairway, okay? And do you see in your life, and if heaven represents the character of Christ, being like God, do you see in your life an increase in righteousness, an increase in love? Sometimes it's two steps up, one step back. But do you see in your life an increase of you becoming like Jesus Christ? then I think you can rest assured, yeah, God is in me, I'm in God, and I'm on the right track. But if you don't see that at all, you should be worried. We really should be. We shouldn't go back to some day in the past where I said a prayer. We should look today. If that repentance and faith was genuine in the past, something should be real today in the way I live my life. So once again, not about guilt, but it is a serious call. Examine your life. And do, is there evidence in your life you really know Jesus? Pray about it today. We'll talk to you Monday.